horror games I could easily survive. After y'all showing so much support on the first video, you know I had to come back for a part two. Had to step back in the ring and defend my name. Friday the 13th, you and a whole bunch of homies said, fuck it, let's bring this on. Let's go to Camp Crystal Lake and let's bowl. All of a sudden, Jason Voorhees come killing niggas. How do you beat this? This game is honestly on the beatable scale. I'm not gonna lie. And that's one of two reasons. In this game, this version of Jason can be jumped. Like, you can spam this nigga with firecrackers and bro is stunned for like a solid three hours. Now, if you're with a whole bunch of idiots, you just gotta sacrifice some of the homies. I'm gonna keep that a buck. You go get the car battery, you go get the gas, and you dip. And honestly, to even escape from there, you don't even need the car. You don't even need that. Just run into the woods. Get out of there. If you know you gotta go that way to get out of there, fuck the car. Run. You're in a life or death situation. Why would I not just go for it and run? You look lonely. I can fix that. Doki Doki Literature Club, a meta psychological horror game that breaks the fourth wall with the main villain being Monica, manipulating her fellow game characters and code just to be with you. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can go up beating this. One, just delete the game and don't be a coomer and give in to Monica. Or. I can't fucking compete! I just can't fucking compete! Can you get the fuck? Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, this game has always confused me, and honestly, Leatherface as a character and like the whole franchise has confused me as like, how are those people in trouble? It's a whole bunch of old, riggedy white people in the woods. I, I used to live in Georgia. I used to see niggas like that all the time. They not on shit. Old man's finna get his ass beat. Old lady finna get her ass beat. Everyone's getting their ass beat. I'ma keep that a buck. Not only my fear is Leatherface. That nigga's 6'4 with retard strength. I don't know how I'ma do that. I'm probably gonna have to catch bro with like a crowbar to his kneecap because Leatherface can take damage he's not as invincible as like people think like if you hit him in the knee with a crowbar that nigga is going down and he's gonna be in pain you can't power through a shattered kneecap I don't give a fuck what you're talking about so I'm shattering bro's kneecap so is he on the ground I'm gonna curb stop I'm just mm, mm, mm. Bro is not getting up. He is, he's out. He's out like a light. I'm gonna hit him with the magical suplex. He, oh, last thing he's gonna see is my black Air Force coming in contact with his face. <laughs> In Cry of Fear, you play as a man, Simon, that gets hit by a car after trying to help a man. Now, you wake up in an alleyway, you're looking for answers, and then you realize you're in hell. You're fighting the fucking scariest, most maniacal creatures out there. Now, could I beat it? I feel like I could possibly beat it, but it would be very high diff. And it's not from a, a physical standpoint, from a mental standpoint, because if you know the game and spoilers ahead, this whole game is in your head. You're having a psychotic episode. So this is really dependent on person to person if you think you could overcome this shit because this shit seems real. Like imagine you're in Simon's POV, you wake up in a random alleyway and then there's just hell monsters all around. Nine times out of 10, y'all, y'all are folding. Y'all y'all would be so mentally fucked in this situation. There would be no beating this. I wanna have a discussion about this in the comments because I really love this fucking game. So if you think you could beat this shit i want you to tell me why in the comments and how you would fucking snap out of the psychosis which is cry of fear Bendy and the Ink Machine is a game of where you go into this old animation studio and there's a lot of ink monsters that are alive. Bendy's trying to kill you. Now, my first thing is, if you can take souls and put it into a drawing and make it real, what character could I bring into this world to help me? I'm bringing in Goku and he's gonna solo everything. I nigga, hi, it's me, Goku. And he's gonna wanna throw hands with everyone. Hey. Goku, that nigga Bendy said you a bitch. He's gonna beat that nigga's ass and I'm have nothing to worry about. Now, I'm gonna have to worry about something after he beats everyone ass and then it's just me and him looking at each other. And he's like, I don't know what to tell, bro, after he beats everyone ass. Like, then that's when the real trouble begins. But we gonna cross that bitch when we get there. But before that, Goku's gonna beat everyone's ass. That's all I gotta say. Bending the Eek Machine gotta be the most beatable game ever. I need to hang up that computer call. Come over here and kiss me on my hot mouth. I'm feeling romantic. Five Nights at Freddy's. 
Now, we already know what FNAF is, children killed, stuffed in the zoots, now they possess the animatronics. I already talked about the first FNAF in the first movie, let me cover the other ones. FNAF 2. FNAF 2 seems like probably the most beatable one, cause you're not really dealing with too much. A lot of them are tricked by the mask, or a flashlight, that's probably like IRL, probably the easiest fucking gameplay to deal with. And also, you know, the smart route, we can dip, cause after night one, haha. <laughs> Chica's gonna have to run for me, my nigga. Toy Chica can get, get it. And then I'm dipping. Honestly, because I'm not dealing with that bullshit. But realistically, if we had to deal with that, just putting on a mask and then a flashlight, and honestly, IRL, why does this nigga not just leave the mask on and use the flashlight? I can't be the only one that's thought about that while playing that game. FNAF 3 is just the ultimate 1v1. I don't give a fuck. Everything else is in your head. All the phantom animatronics can't actually hurt you. They can't do shit that is a 1v1 versus you versus spring trap bro i'm gonna throw hands nigga you're not sliding and uh the animatronics are immortal they can't fucking die yes the fuck they can you ever heard of a flamethrower nigga have you ever seen the video of like of that guy that caught a roach and then he hit it with a blowtorch that's what i'm gonna do to that nigga i'm gonna just flame his shit until he's nothing but ash he's not coming back from that i always come back nah homie you're in a wood we're smoking on you you're ashes bro now as a fnaf fan myself i still honestly don't fully understand FNAF. FNAF 4, but from my understanding, and FNAF fans, please correct me in the comments, I'm pretty sure FNAF 4 is all in this kid's head. So honestly, there's no way to die. He got bit, and he just dies anyways, because his fucking frontal lobe was in Freddy's was mouth, so bro was gone either way. So FNAF 4 does not even count. I heard y'all some of, of y'all saying, oh, no, you couldn't beat FNAF 4. It would be impossible. You would die anyways, because I don't see anyone surviving without their frontal lobe.